Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm your host, Mike Rower 31. Go bang out the Xfinity race quickly here. Uh, just a quick programming note, uh, lots of things going on, on our channel. We have NFL, McKinley's been doing hockey Monday through Friday. Uh, we've been, um, I have the uh, truck video also out there and I'll be doing cups. So let's go now and scratch our channel so you know these videos are coming out. Uh, we have uh, Homestead Miami. This is... Um, Second to last race before the cutoff, they'll go to Martinsville next week, and then um, Phoenix is the final in three weeks from now. So uh, this is not a cutoff race. Uh, we have nobody locked in because Riley Herbst, congratulations, won his first race ever in Xfinity last week. So uh, there's only two chances for people to lock in, so two people are going to be able to point their way in. Creed and Smith I have in red just because they're far enough out that I think mathematically if there is chaos, they can make it in. It's not um, impossible, but it's improbable. Uh, Smith and Mayer have a lot of work to do, uh, whereas Creed and, and Chandler Smith I think need to win it. Sammy Smith and Sam Mayer could maybe point their way in. And I think um, the top four right now is Custer, Algeyer, and Hill, with Nemechek having as enough of a lead that I think that unless he has two Absolutely horrible races. It will be fine. He'll be able to point his way in if he does not win a race. 200 races here. So you're looking at uh, probably two to three dominators. High tire wear track comparable to Darlington Auto Club, which they already ran, hosted last year. Um, so let's just look at the breakdown here. So Cole Custer, prime play, first in practice, first in 10 lap fall off, third overall in composite. Knows the track, really good at tire wear track. Um, going to lock him in. John Hunter Nemechek has been having an amazing season. He was second in practice, second in fall off. First overall in composite average. I usually have him as GPP just because I've seen him have a lot of wrecks. He's been in better form recently. <clears throat> Can you play both of them with the other primes I have in here? Yes. Not a horrible lineup. Doesn't You're not like play, play, playing a bunch of fade plays. At the bottom, I think you can make it work. I'm not saying I recommend it, uh, especially because if you're playing two guys in cash that are starting that far and, and they don't both dominate and one of them gets in trouble, you're losing a lot of place differential points. Uh, so you're, you're really playing something risky. And, and there's a lot of guys in the cash range that uh, I think are going to be better plays. But I'm saying if you want to play these two cars that look like the best out here in practice and qualifying, um and that's the build you want to go for I, I don't hate it but i don't necessarily love it either Algeyer is um definitely in the thick of things but it didn't look as great in practice here fall off was a little bit like he's really good on tire wear tracks usually but i have him as a gpp here uh if he you want to pair him with custer or or nema check up there i get it maybe you want to just um play like the 20 uh, entry like chrome horn where it's like a four dollar or three dollar or like a one dollar one and just like rotate like pairs of these ones because i think you throw austin hill in there also between these four drivers up top i think you could have one or two of your dominators and i think it's just a and just if their rank is like three one five and two so out of all the composite on like tire wear tracks and everything all considered these are four of the best drivers or five of the best drivers four of the five best drivers in xfinity so I, I think they're definitely going to try to have exposure to all of them. I just was a little weary what I saw in practice and um, all guy are just not having as much speed, but, and his fall off was good, but not great. Like it usually is. <clears throat> Maybe he'll figure things out, but um, and, you know, you can't play everybody unless like I said, you're like, you're doing like a rotational thing. So like in my main cash, he's not going to make the cut. Um uh, but Austin Hill, I think, would be in, in, in consideration also. Sending the GPP here, uh, seventh in practice, third in fall off, which is decent. But just looking at his overall um, numbers, it's just a little bit lower. Brett Moffat, you know, the Brett Moffat whisperer never has been a great, like, tire wear track guy. Um, qualified good here, but I don't think he can really hold it in the, the top six, so... I think that he's definitely going to move back. Riley Hurst is coming off the momentum, but <clears throat> his Darlington numbers are really pulling things down here. But that's, that's been the story of the season. He's been boom or bust. We saw the boom last week. 
um, actually dominating performance. Like it was the highest margin, the biggest margin of victory uh, for any race this year. So, uh, but I just think that was um, last week and this, this week, I just don't like it as much. Josh Berry, I think uh, is in cash. He's out of the playoffs. So he, he's out there still continuing to try to win races before he moves up the cup next year. Uh, six fastest, 11th and fall off. Um, should be decent. Shannon Krieg's always a GPP. Uh, he's just too volatile, makes uh, too many aggressive moods and gets in trouble. Parker Kleerman was third. And again, he's playing with house money here. Didn't have great fall off speed. I mean, he was just outside the top 15. So I think he'll be okay. But um, I like him as a GPP. Now, Izzy, if you're watching the video, you're going to fall over here because I have Joe Jeff Jr. as a GPP and not as a fade. I fade him every single week. He's too volatile. He always racks. He actually looked decent out here, and he hasn't been as bad on these types of tire wear tracks. Like He actually looked pretty good in Auto Club. He's in the Joe Gibbs 19 car here, so uh, I might give him a shot in a GPP and, and see if he can like hold a top 15, but um, it is very volatile to play. Smith and Mayer here are both um, cash plays. Like Smith, a little bit better at the price tag and with long run speed. But uh, Sam Mayer, all things considered, is your fourth best driver overall when it comes to tire wear tracks and similar tracks. So I think there's some upside there. And he was inside the top 20 and fall off, but not like in the top 15. So that's a little bit concerning, plus the the price tag. But, you know, he's still in the playoffs. And, um, and that could be a knock, too, because Smith – is one that might be like more chasing the wind than trying to point his way in. Mayor might be chasing stage points and might put him at disadvantage with like um, getting like fresher tires. Like, but then again, if he's out there for stage two and does it early, his tires might be fresher and might be able to cut through the field. So um, there's always that aspect there. Ryan Sieg starting too far forward. It's a GPP, um, even though his numbers are decent here. Uh, I like when he starts a little bit further back. Hemrick is really good at tire wear tracks, fifth and fall off. I think he's a solid cash play here at 8,200. Uh, Parker Resloff, GPP, uh, still young, still learning about tire wear tracks. So um, I think there's a little bit upside here, but not a ton of floor. Brandon Jones, uh, decent at tire wear tracks, uh, decent fall off, 8,500, fifth in practice, didn't qualify as well. I think there's a lot of upside here. I only play him on certain types of tracks, and this is the type of track I'll take a chance on him. Uh, Weatherman and Grawla starting a little bit too far forward. It's a GPP. Grawla looked good with his um, fall off, but um, his fall off is better than his practice time. But he's all the rest of his things indicate he should pretty much finish where he starts. Uh, Cross is, is decent in this Kali car. Uh, he's run really well in it. Um, I think he's got about five place differential points in him. So I think I can do him in cash. Connor Mosaic, GPP. I think he's fallen down a little bit. Jeremy Clements um, should finish around where he starts. It's 66. I think he has to say four here. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., not because of the namesake, not because of what he's done before at Prime, but what I saw two weeks ago at Bristol. He was running well. He's actually up leading the race. The car caught on fire and had a mechanical issue. I highly doubt that will happen again. He's good on tire wear tracks. He's ninth in practice here, seventh in fall off. Um, even though his number is like 20th overall, like this wasn't his best track when he raced in cup, but I think among the competition, the experience that he has here, he should do quite well. He's not a 23rd place car. He could probably get up in the top 15 and at 8,800, I'd like to play. Ryan Newman, a GPP, a lot of experience here also, but I really don't like the equipment, the 66, unless it's like, um got some backing from somebody else I, I just don't think that it's um actually is it even uh okay it's a ford it's not a chevy but unless it's got like some Stuart haas backing or something like that which which is all potentially it could I don't know who prepared the car. He might have just bought it to be in this race and then just like registered under MBM. Uh, so I, that's a GPP and not a fade. But um, I think he's kind of, you know, over the hill and uh, just out there, just running some races that just for the enjoyment of it. And I don't think he's going to be super competitive here. Kyle Sieg, GPP. Uh, Starting a little bit further forward than he usually does. Josh Williams, same thing. 
He's just seen some mechanical issues recently, so I don't think he has as much floor. He's usually been a solid cash play, but I just um, I think he can finish where he starts. Honeyman, same thing. Elf Prime Car is decent, but uh, I think he can just finish where he starts. Jeb Burton, there's some upside here. Ethan Practice, um, this is a good car, the Jordan Anderson car. Wasn't outstanding with fall off, but he's starting in, in almost in the 30s here and 15th composite. I, I think he definitely can move up um, about a dozen spots. So I really like him here. Lock him as a prime play. Brandon Poole has a lot of experience on tire wear tracks. Um, even though the car is not the greatest, I think that he can hold his own and is solid for cash play. Maglio, even though he's in the Ryan C car, I think he's going backwards. Uh, Alfredo, I like the driver here. 18th overall, but there was some better equipment over the years. So I, I think he's still a cash play, but, um, you know, I think there's some upside there. Dawson Cram, not interested in. Uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt uh, is decent on tire wear tracks. Also, should be able to move up about five spots, so he's a cash. Blaine Perkins should hold around here, not be – he's probably the better ones of the worst cars, so GPP. Uh, Massey green light racing, uh, 44th overall in my out of 38 cars. So he was worse than the ones that didn't qualify. So can't go there. Uh, Emerald and grace racing cars are horrible. One of them didn't even make the field. So Emerald Link, sorry, you're out. Ryan Ellis. I like this alpha prime, um, should be able to move up maybe six to eight places, 5,400 like that as a great cash play for you. And CJ McLaughlin is just not a really good race car driver. Um, I'm surprised he made it in over Natalie Decker. So uh, probably just because of the car he's driving and had enough points in it, but nothing that he did to get into this race. So that's what I got for you. If you have any questions, put them in the chat below. Hit me up at megaroar 31 on Twitter. If you have any questions about FSI DFS, you can um, go to the description of the video and you can get to our website and all that information is there too to see all the great packages that we have for you to help you with DFS. And uh, just good luck in your contests. Um, check out the rest of the videos. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so so you can see what's coming out. So I hope you have an amazing weekend. You know how to go to hold of me and hope you do well in these contests. And I'll see you for the cup video later on this weekend and for next week for Martinsville.